Welcome to our workshop. I've got a chair here with a broken leg. It's split down here. This is actually the second time I've seen the same chair in my repair shop. The previous repair I did was a split from here down to here. Now when you repair wood with glue and glue it properly, the wood fibers on that joint with the glue are stronger than the rest of the wood fibers in the chair. And this is proof of that. This wood separated here, not on the glue line, but in another spot. What happened was uh, someone that was over 200 pounds sat on this chair, putting force here and here and forcing that wood apart. What it tells me is I've got a compromised piece of wood here and I need to replace that. I'm going to show you how. As a furniture repair business, we're opening the doors to our workshop to show you the tools and techniques to repair furniture. What I need to do is take that apart, repair it, and put it back together so I can get this chair in working order. We give you tips to make your repair projects easier. Let's get into the workshop and start fixing furniture. The first thing I have to say about this chair is, please don't let people lean back on a wooden chair like this. Chairs aren't designed for these stresses. Chairs are meant for weight being put on them this way, and the backrest is meant as a rest, not as something that you push back on. What I'm going to do is take this all apart so I've got this individual piece and I can start working on the replacement. You may have noticed a sticker on the bottom of this chair. This is the previous repair number. This gives me a label to go back to my records to make sure the repair that I'm doing isn't a warranty issue. The split goes from here down to here. The previous repair goes from down here all the way up to here. And if we look real close, I'll show you how that split. Here on the front, it's really evident to see that it's the wood that's separated and not the previous repair. If you look at this line up here, this is where the previous repair joint was. So that's held together, but here the wood separated. So I need to replace this wood and get something solid in here. Here's what the joiner looks like on the back. I've got two dowels that go into the leg and then there are two bolts here that secure the leg to the seat. So I've got to take off this piece of wood, clean up that joint, and then I'm ready to build the leg and get it to fit. I've got a brad nail here to take out, but look at the end of this wood here. This has got a finish on it, and because it's got a finish, there's no way that that can bond to the upright piece. So I've got to clean that off as well. Here are a couple tools I use to clean off these joints. One is a paint scraper, and I'll leave links to these in the description of the video. This is good for getting in spots, and I don't mind using this as a rough tool to get in and clean out the bulk of it. And then where I want to get into fine spots and really scrape it down well is I use a card scraper. Now before I can reproduce this leg, I've got a big gap here and some holes. So I'm just going to put this back together again. I'm not going to glue it, I'm just going to tape it. So that way I've got a good profile here for being able to duplicate the part. And I've got a good idea of where these holes are. This leg is made out of a low grade mahogany, which is probably part of the reason that it's failing. I'm going to use maple to replace it. It's got a smooth grain pattern similar to this. If I use something like oak, you'd see that grain pattern coming through the stain. So what I'm going to do is trace this out, cut it out, 
and then I'm ready to mill the holes. To have the strongest leg possible, I want the grain of this leg to go straight down here. If the grain's going across this piece, it's apt to break. And what you'll notice here is the piece that I chose, there's a natural grain pattern that's going in this curve shape like this. And I'm gonna use that to my advantage as I lay out this part. On the top of this chair leg, this isn't 90 degrees. So I need to cut that angle, and it's easier to cut that angle when I've got a whole board rather than a cut board. So I set my T-bevel so I get the right angle. And then from here, I can pull out my saw set, line up the T-bevel, and it tells me I've got five, six, seven degrees. So I double check this by laying down the leg and then putting my T-bevel on. And the angle is perfect. I sand the edges with a belt sander. That way I can sand it down to my pencil line and make sure I've got the part exactly the way I want it. What I do is use a piece of sandpaper, in this case 120 grit, to ease those edges and make sure they match the existing piece. It's really important that it doesn't just look the same, but it also feels the same. Your hand will tell you a lot about what you've done here. So now what I've got to do is drill the holes in these and get them ready for the dowels, and then I can get on to staining. To locate the holes here for these two dowels, what I'm going to do is just put this right on top and drill through the existing holes. That way they're in the right spot. And at the top, I'm just going to measure the center and drill that one as well. For the top of the leg, first thing I'm going to do is mark the center. And then what I do is I clamp it up on the vise so that this is level. This is on an angle, and I have a hard time judging that angle, but if I set this piece up so it's level both ways, then it's easier for me to eyeball that this is going in straight. So I'm just going to clamp this one to it. And then I've got a level surface for making sure that this is going in at the right angle. Now for the test fit, let's see how it comes together. So I've got the dowel inserted here. It'll work these ones in. Let's see how it comes together. Yep, that's gonna work. So now what I'm gonna do is stain this piece and get it ready for the glue up. I've got two gel stains here that will likely work with this. I'm just gonna test them out on some scrap and see which one works best. I'm using gel stain because on maple, it doesn't take stain very well and I need a really deep, rich color here. So this one is aged oak. Just gonna get a glob of it here and rub it on. 
Let's see what the color looks like. Okay, that's dark. Now for the chestnut, it should be a little more red. Let's see. It's actually a little darker. So that chestnut looks like the right color. I've masked off the joint here so I don't get any finish here. I want clean wood here to bond to the chair. I've also put a dowel here in my vise. And what that's going to let me do is put this in here and I can stain the whole piece at once. I've now got the stain the way I want it. I ended up having to put a second coat on it and I went over it a third time with a brush just to address some of the streaks that I was getting with using a rag. I'm now at the point where I'm going to put a clear finish on. I'm just using a spray can for this. I do own an HVLP sprayer, but for small jobs like this, this gets the job done quickly. To protect my lungs from the chemicals in these finishes, what I do is change my respirator over from the wood dust filters, which is a P100, to a carbon organic filter and I store these in a plastic bag because it extends the life and they go on like this and now I'm protecting my lungs from the chemicals that are in these finishes. The leg's now finished and ready to be installed. At the top here, I've got a loose tenon. I had to make this joint a little bit loose so that I can get the other piece put together. Here I'm going to be using epoxy glue, and down here I'm going to be using wood glue. If you're curious about how to use epoxy for repairs, I've got a video on that. I'm putting the wood glue on first. I've got a 20 minute working time on that glue. So I'm just peeling off my masking tape here to reveal the clean wood to be glued up. It's important that you get the glue to the bottom of the holes. And I just make sure, yeah, I've got lots of room there. common mistake people make is not putting enough wood glue on the joints. What you need to do is cover every single part of the wood that's going to connect and that way you've got enough glue coverage. If you don't have enough glue you could glue start the joint and it will fail on you. Okay so with that ready I've now got about 15 minutes I can work on the epoxy. So epoxy that I'm using right here has a working time of six minutes. So I've got to move relatively quickly with this so I can get everything put together. So again, putting the glue deep inside that hole and making sure there's good glue coverage. Same thing here.
With the leg attached to the back now, the last thing I need to do is put in the insert nuts. And this is where the bolt attaches from the seat into the back. The insert nuts here you can see allow the bolt to screw in. And I'm concerned if I put these in here because they're such a coarse thread, I might split this wood. And after all the work to do this, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to do a test first. Now to drive an inset nut, what I need to do is take the bolt and put a couple of nuts on it. And I need to lock them in so I've got something that I can turn against. So I just take my, my adjustable wrench. Tighten these up. Okay, so now what I've done is I've locked these nuts on here. I can thread this one in. And now I can use this top nut to be able to twist that into place. So down here, I'm starting to see some split. So I need a wider hole than this. There, that's the right size hole. My last challenge is to get these inset nuts out. The only way I know how to do that is cut this off and then split the wood with a chisel. So I'm going to do that, but if anyone has any wisdom on how to pull these out, I'd love to hear it. Here's the final stretch. I'll put the bolts through. There are three bolts that are shorter that hold in the back here. And then there are four bolts, two that go into each leg. What I've noticed here is there's a fair bit of play in the back here. So to get those holes in the right spot into this leg, what I'm going to do is stand it up, tighten up everything so I get the chair level and there's no rocking, and then I'll install those inset nuts. Now I have access here that I can get the drill bit in here and drill these holes. Now it's all set to go back together. So here's the assembled chair, are ready to go back to the customer. We're building a supportive community about furniture repairs. We'd like to hear your comments and your questions. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can click on the link over here and click on that bell icon to make sure you get notified when our next videos come out. Thanks for watching Fixing Furniture. Mm -hmm.